Port injection versus DFI. Which one makes more horsepower? There's been a lot of debate about it, so let's get into it. All right, guys, let's get into it. And again, this is brought to you by Einstein Motors and we're covering DFI versus EFI. And just quickly, I wanna uh, do a quick apology. Last week, I made a mistake on the board. I put relative instead of research. Again, you can pretty much Google this really easily. I am highly dyslexic, highly functional. So even when I'm talking, I'm already writing something or doing an equation or doing something in my head. I'm 100 miles an hour. So I do apologize for that. And just to cover a couple of points, because we had some uh, opinions in the comments about ROM being the standard. It's a standard, not the standard. We got to look at uh, IKA in the US. It's um, probably one of the better fuel standards because it's the sum of RON and MON. And this is why you'll see their, uh, their, sorry, their pump, I think they call it uh, pump octane number. So an 87 octane in America, uh, again, that's RON plus MON, and that's roughly equivalent to our 91, 92 in Australia or Europe. So same as their 91, 94, that's like 96 to 99 octane in, in our country, in Australia or, or Europe. So no, RON isn't a uh, isn't the standard, it's a standard. So again, I prefer the US system because uh, your MON factor is more uh, real world because it's high speed knock sensitivity. We're also going to get into uh, chemistry kinetics later on. Um, we've got Einstein doing a whole series on that. So the chemistry of how uh, octane, um, sorry, how uh, oxidation rates and stuff like that and the chemistry of different fuels and how they affect burn rates on top of what we we're talking about last week as far as chamber design and piston design and all that sort of stuff. All right, so let's get into it. So what are the factors that are gonna influence us making horsepower? I wanna break down some of the mechanisms that are gonna influence how much horsepower we make between the two systems. And the first one is shear time. And again, this is something I found out really, really quickly testing manifolds and different injector positions. The further we go up, the more horsepower I tend to make. And that's because we have more shear time. And people need to remember, this is actually a turbulent environment, not a laminar flow. Uh, a lot of head guys will say, uh, oh, the head turned turbulent on the flow bench. You can hear that noise. They really start to really scream. Um, what's actually happening is we've seen separation. So uh, a Cleveland head's a perfect example off the short turn. As soon as you start putting big, big lift numbers into them, um, they will separate off the short turn and that separate creates that really high suction sound. So now we know we're dealing with turbulent air, we know that we're going to have a lot of shear stress. So the problem with um, basing our theories on laminar flow is laminar has a horrible convection factor and a horrible mixing factor. They, all, all the uh, air paths stay side by side. They're not interacting. Uh, that's why we've got to look at all of our induction as a turbulent uh, flow regime. And again, a simple Reynolds number will show this is plus 20,000, you know, even at lower RPM. So now that we understand the environment, we understand why that injector makes horsepower the further we make, move it away from the port window. That's because we have more shear time. So Formula One had it at the end of the runner for a reason. The longer the shear time, the more we can pull those fuel molecules apart. And that feeds into our SMD, a sort of mean diameter. The smaller we can get those droplets, the better chance we have a, of a homogenized mix in that chamber. And that's the goal at the end of the day. And this also feeds into our previous video with Squish because Squish is that last little quench, I should say, is that last little effort to really rip those fuel molecules apart. And, and um, it's that turbulent nature that will tear those fuel molecules apart. And, and there's, there's other factors we'll get into, but so by all accounts, we assume that the further we get away, the more horsepower we make. But this is where our SMD factor comes into it because with direct fuel injection, our SMD is far smaller. And this is where it'll start 
to make sense. There's also another mechanism I'll cover just in a minute, but let's just cover this. Our average SMD for just normal port injection, say at three bar, we're 120 microns. So that's a massive droplet of fuel. And we're doing it, sorry, right at the valve. So, and there's also a Yamaha study that we're putting up on Einstein Motors that we've done a breakdown on and, and they actually tested different injector positions and uh, they actually showed that pointing the injector at the floor actually made more horsepower, but we got more fuel wetting. So uh, throttle sensitivity was a problem and stuff like that. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that one. So our time to pull that fuel apart on port injection is quite lousy. So what, DFI does to get around the you know, shortness of time because now all they have is their quench mechanism is fuel pressure. So rather than running a little three bar and having a huge fuel drop, but their average fuel pressure is around about 100 bar. Some system 50, some 150. I think Formula One tested like 200 bar. Again, uh, round numbers, I'm not sure. I'm sure someone in the comments can tell me. Uh, and their droplet size is... Uh, 30 microns. So as you can see, the massive reduction. So there's a clear correlation between fuel pressure and droplet size. We know this. And, and also uh, pintle design and injector design. The, when we're seeing this in uh, DFI engines now, uh, the more technology that goes into that injector, the better our micron size will be. Because again, we're trying to get that phase change. We're trying to get it to almost a gaseous state and a perfect homogenization. It is never ever perfect, but this is what we're trying to achieve. All right, so now I wanna cover the physics of the injector being at the port window and how that negates some of our pumping losses because it's so close to a critical area. So what we need to understand is what's actually happening in our valve event. Remember, this is not a constant velocity uh, regime or setup. It, it is a timed event, open, close, open, close. We have valve duration. The valve is only open for a certain amount of time. And it's the piston that dictates by the percentage of cross-sectional area what type of airspeed we're going to have and how well our inertia supercharging mechanisms work. And remember, it's a velocity curve. So if we just simplify it, don't look at harmonic elements and stuff, it goes from zero to 670, 690, it really depends, feet per second back to zero as that piston creates a pressure drop. Remember, and this is why I say all engines are forced induction. If we look at it this way, uh, it tends to make more sense when we're actually experimenting with engines. So all the piston is doing is creating a low pressure event. Engines don't suck air. It's that 100 mile of air pressure, the weight of air that is getting forced into the engine. So again, all engines are forced induction. So when we have a turbocharger, a supercharger, these are what we call density modifiers. All they are changing is how close the air molecules are together. This is why we see a, a rise in temperature because the in, um, molecule interaction creates more friction because they're closer and bouncing off each other. But as far as the offsets go as far as pressure differential. So if we've got a car or a turbo with 10 PSI, that's 10 plus our 14.7 originally. So now we've got 24.7 PSI of pressure differential across that induction system. So, and really it only changes the rate of the curve. It's not gonna change our velocity limitations because our velocity limitations are based on our limitations of sound. This is why there's a temperature coefficient needed in induction length. And by that I mean, and I'll try and break it down a little bit more, as, as we increase air temperature, we increase the speed of sound. Air has a physical limitation flowing through a port. So at sea level and roughly room temperature, we might be 1116 feet per second. That's as fast as sound wants to go, which gives us a velocity limitation in a port at around about 0 0.55 Mach, okay? Which is just over half of the speed of sound. That's roughly where you want to be to make as much horsepower uh, as possible because if we go too fast you start to degrade the quality of that air so more speed means more friction more friction means more 
air temp and more or hot, hotter air basically, increase in air temp, and that means a reduction in density. And the whole point is to get as many air molecules in as we can. So why does the injector rob horsepower as far as a uh, physical property, ignoring our uh, SMD? That's because this is a critical timed process, a critical amount of energy. Energy isn't lost, it's only transferred. So if we're shooting fuel into here, fuel that's expanding from a high pressure to a low pressure environment, it's gonna take up mass area and it's gonna rob from how much offset in that pressure differential we had. And that's why we're also seeing contributing factors uh, of the injector robbing horsepower. And again, I think we're talking about three to 5% difference between the two. So there's an SMD factor, but then there's also a physics mechanism that causes the injector to rob us horsepower at the port window. And again, this is why we move it away the further we move it away, the less it's going to affect that physical mechanism of velocity because it's intermixed now, much earlier, much sooner. So we're not going to affect those pumping losses as much. So anyway, hopefully you like this breakdown. Again, put some in the comments, say, Jake, you did this wrong, whatever. I don't mind. Try and be polite. Uh, give us some uh, pointers uh, if you think I missed anything. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs>